vision that I had for Emmanuel. I'm not quite sure when it started, but it's being recorded on May 8th, 2024. The vision starts out with a picture of um, a woman and she has a blindfold around her eyes and it's meant to portray, I think it's called Lady Justice. I think that's what it is. And um, she did have the, I don't know the proper name of it, but it's the scale, I think it's a scale actually, um, as well which is something I didn't know that Lady Justice has until I looked it up, but, um, and in one side of the scale, she actually has these quivers, and they're full of, um, roses, but they're the Rose of Sharon, I think that's what that's called, um, something like that. They're not actual, like, roses. Um, Anyway, she has this bow and arrow as well, and she has a quiver on her back. Um, and in the scale, the quiver's full of these roses, like rose arrows, also has a giant pile of the roses all just laying on top of them. Um, and I can see that she's pulling these arrows out of her, the back quiver. Um, and she's kind of shooting them out, like irrationally or sporadically or whatever, whatever would describe her shooting them um, all kinds of different ways with no location at all in mind or I'm not quite sure what, why she's doing that. Um, and you can see that they are the roses, but that they turn into arrows. And I think she ends up reaching for the ones that are in the pile after she's out of the ones that are on her back. Anyway, um, in, in one side of the scales is the, the quivers and, and the arrow flowers. And the other side are like three large stones and they actually equal the same weight. It's balanced. Um, after this, she gets down, she's shooting all over the place, and then she gets down and she, there's this huge boulder in front of her. And she gets down underneath the boulder, there's a small space for her to be able to get under. And she crawls underneath there and there's a tiny space out in front of her. So she goes in one side and starts to go to the other, to look out the other. And I could see her, and you could see her eye. It was straining. You could see the veins straining with all of her might to see something. But she was blind, which was very interesting because she still had that wrap around, but somehow wrapped around her eyes. But somehow she strained her eye to be able to see. And it was huge and, and straining. And so out of her eye came like this, um, I want to say squirt, because it was like it squirted out. Um, and it almost looked like dye going into water. I don't know if you've seen that or smoke. It's got like curls on it. Um, but it just, it looked like smoke almost. It curled around and it started to actually erase what was out in front of her. And what was out in front of her was like, it, it was like garden or forest or something. A lot of greenery. But you could only see a teeny tiny portion because that's all the area that she could see underneath this boulder with this tiny opening. And so this is actually where I got stuck um, for a really long time with this vision. I prayed and prayed that the Lord would let me move forward and I couldn't get forward at all. And I just didn't understand it. Um, and I thought I was like being held back or something, but actually it was that I had to go back to go forward. So the Lord actually wouldn't allow me to move forward in this vision because this vision had to move backwards. So she actually moves backwards and gets back into the position that she was at. And then she started to shoot straight. And as she's shooting straight, she's actually hitting the boulder in the same spot over and over and over again. And it splits in half. And that actually enables her to see fully what is in front of her. So at this point, 
you, Emmanuel, show up on the scene and you walk up to the area that she's in with the split open boulder and you are wearing, um, you're wearing a cloth or like a, um, a very specific outfit. I want to say it's like a material that it's like olden day material. Um, gosh, linen. I'm going to say linen. It was a baby blue linen shirt and almost like <laughs> capris or something. I forget what they're called. They're like shorter pants. Um, and those are brown. And so you're wearing this outfit and you've got slung on your back a leather uh, map holder. So it like the first couple inches and then there's a zipper and then the rest of the thing goes down. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so you have that on your back as you approach and you even have like this leather hat on like almost like a cowboy hat but not really I guess we have like an Australian hat maybe just a very like journeying type of outfit I guess um and then once you take out the, so you unzip the map and once you take it out you actually your whole outfit changes to um a, a military uniform and you are at attention if that makes any sense like you're at attention um, and then you pull the map out at attention once you unravel this map um, you open up this map and th this is a map of the United States and you could see that there are like the best way I can describe it if you've ever seen a, a movie or anything that has like yarn to kind of tell where people have been and gone this thing is covered and there's no rhyme or reason to where these places are are going like there's nothing I don't know that makes any sense it's all over the place there's no order there's no nothing and so you actually start to erase all of it you erase all the lines every single line on there is erased and then the next thing you do you start to do like plot points you have like somehow you put in a I don't know how to describe it it's almost like a pin a bright red pin this is all in red these spaces are all in this uh, the, the yarn and now what you're doing is in red and um, so you put this giant pin and you do a straight line from where we are in Washington up through Canada and then you pinpoint another one um, actually you don't do that that way you go from Washington to New York, and then you put a pin on each side. So then you make sure that there's a pin up in Canada because you about, I don't know why, but this is what happens after that. So because you have, you have a pin in Washington and then a pin um, straight, through Canada to New York. It goes through Canada to New York. Um, and then in order to start doing your next thing, I think you have to pin in Canada. So you pin kind of in the middle between the two into Canada. And then you start to take the um, point from Washington and the point from, um, from New York and you start to pull them down, um, like little by little by little. And at first it's just kind of the top half of the United States and then it goes all the way to the bottom of the United States. And so because you push those pins straight down, it made lines again through the United States, but these were more specific and accurate and thicker and more clear. So then at this point, I see you and a couple different things happen. So I see you finished with this map and you are now in your clothes, like everyday clothes. And you have your thinking, like a thinking face on. And so you are, um, you know, contemplating and stuff. Anyway, you're, you're able to roll up this map and there's a map underneath it and it has a map of the, actually the whole world. And I start to see little arrows going from one place to another, like you would when you're flying an airplane and it shows you where you'll be at one spot to the next. Um, but then it kind of goes back to the, uh, American, the American map of America. And so the Lord starts to show me who is there with you. And at first it is just you. And then I see Tim and I see John and then I see Justin, I see Matt and I see Andy. 
And then I see that the Lord um, I see that the Lord starts to show me what each person is doing that has to do with this map. And the first thing I see is uh, Noah. Noah shows up first. Um, and he's actually just there for the time being. He is just, I think, observing as well. Like I could, all three, all four of you are standing and observing at this point. And then I start to see uh, Justin and Matt and Andy show up. And then um, I start to see what, what each one is doing. So the first thing I see is I see Justin and he has his hands outstretched in a protective manner over the top. So he's at the front of the map and you guys are like looking at it head on from the other side. And he's got his arms stretched out over the map. And you can see that he has many, many arrows that have struck him in the back. And um, this season of the arrows in his back is a painful season, clearly, but it's also, a, you could see his, um, it's not a, a painful in a way that it hurts him to have the arrows. It's painful in a way that he's still trying to protect. So he's protecting um, with his strength. And it's the strength of the Lord. It's not his own strength. Because that strength begins to um, actually push the arrows out of his back. The strength that he, you can see that he has pushes the arrows out of his back. And after all the arrows are out of his back, you can see him lifting up praise. Continual praise. Continual praise. Continual praise. And I don't know how long that went on for. Um, and then once that praise is lifted up, no arrows. The arrows would come, but they wouldn't penetrate. Um, and it put him at ease. Like he was able to still hold his stature, I guess, but also have the strength. Like the strength was just growing and growing. And as the strength grew, he was actually able to lift that whole little scene. He was able to, with his strength, lift that whole scene out of the atmosphere of the earth and into the atmosphere outside of the earth. So that position changed and everything else stayed the same. And you can see that that strength would continue to um, give him the ability to place, make the environment, to, to have the proper environment for where things were supposed to be or to place place this situation in safety or something like that. Um, and then the, the next person I saw was Matt. And Matt had, um, he had like a ruler behind his ear and a pad and paper in his hand. And he, he was actually had the same the same stat, the same um, stances as you four did, because it was you, uh, not Emmanuel, you, Tim, John, and, and uh, Noah, and and so he kind of had that same like arms crossed, hand on their face, looking and observing type of thing and figuring things out. This whole time, um, time's going by really, really, really fast. I could see you talking and moving, and it's it's just a fast forward thing. This is a this is a span of time, um, and you're talking a lot through the thing and um anyway i could see matt and matt what matt is bringing to this map is the key so he has you know how when maps have a key to show you where everything is at he's actually building that with his ruler and his pencil and his notes and things like that he's putting things on the map that are really important to um give understanding and clarity of of what's going on inside of the map so he has the ability to write on the outside of the map a key. And then I saw Andy, and I saw Andy with actually one of those old-fashioned, um, I'm forgetting the name right now, but it's it's spyglass, an old-fashioned spyglass. But this spyglass actually had new technology, and he was able to use it almost like a camera where you can zoom in and out, and you can change the lenses, and you can do all that stuff. And he was able to see into these places, into intricate detailed places of this map um, and bring forth things out of that. And then the next thing I saw was um, John. John had these huge pieces of paper and you would think that it, they were they were like receipts, but they were like a giant's receipts. He was holding them and like they were huge and he was going over them and he just was involved in what was going on with you and um, him and and was just really involved in looking at the map and looking at his receipts and looking it over and talking it through and just really working through that with you um, and then I saw Tim and Tim had both of his hands in the map so they were spread out both of his hands laying over the map and this cost him greatly 
this was extremely burdensome and extremely painful. And it was very, very, very hard for him. Um, and he, 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 with strength again, was able to kind of pull the map up out of itself a little bit um, into reality. But he could, it was very difficult for him to do that. So you can see him trying to pull his hands up and make these things like come to life and come a reality. Um, but he could barely do it. And so Noah is observing this. And so he comes alongside his dad with a facial expression of just like kindness and love and willingness. And just it was really beautiful. Anyway, and he has a pencil that he has behind his ear. And he takes it. And he starts to erase things that are holding him down that aren't supposed to be there. So he starts to erase, 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 and then he has scissors and he starts to cut things off. And that actually releases a huge burden off of Tim. He's more relaxed, he's more comfortable, and he's actually able to raise his hands up in strength a lot further than he was before. And so then I see Noah, and Noah comes and he kind of sees his dad, what his dad's doing, and he puts his hands on the map as well with joy and willingness to do so. And then you can see his strength beginning to, to try, to try, to try. But it looks like he's doing it in his own, like all by himself. Like he cannot pull it up by himself. He cannot do it alone. And so what I begin to see at this point is um, a bunch of hands on Noah from the community. Everybody has his hands on Noah. And once the hands are on him, he's able to pull it up, like up and out. And it's like this greater, greater reality. And then at the very end of that, I actually saw, um, that's when the map, I guess, was rolled up, the first map, because, I don't, oh, no, 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 there was a great joy of you. You were full of joy and great clapping and laughing, and it just, to, to see it all play out, to see it all happen was a great, great joy of yours. Like, you were thrilled, beyond thrilled. Um, and then after that, I actually saw that map roll up, and that's when I saw the map of the world. And then it started almost like it started over again, where it was you by yourself with your with your you know thinking face, with your thinking things through face, and then the map started to go out. And I very, very clearly felt in my spirit that I was not allowed to approach this. I was not allowed to go any further. I couldn't see, I was not allowed to see what was in that yet or at all. I don't know. But there was a very clear stopping for me. And so that's kind of where the, the vision ended.